Hey y'all, it's me, Ren. Back again for another adventure. My hands are slightly sticky. Okay, let's clean that up. Sorry about that. I got a little bit of creamer on my hands. It's a great start. Let's touch a bunch of things, make a mess. Okay. We're gonna play. Oh, hello everyone. I'm just diving in here. I, 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 there's nobody there, so I tend to like just streamline this whole introduction part. But uh, here I am, back again to play Monster Prom. And we're still doing first term, and we're still doing short games when I'm by myself. Uh, we might have a guest coming up here, and that might be exciting for folks. We'll see, we'll see. Ah, uh, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are we? Today we're Blue. Our name is Blue Wren. Blurn. Let's be Blurn today. I like that better. I'm in a Blurn kind of mood. Uh, and yeah, Blurn's a they. So we'll go ahead with that. Uh, and we have yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for its rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, 400 and something, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polygeist, 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. My, my pointer was right on her face. I'm sorry, Polly. And Vera Oberlin, 23. A mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them. But who... We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yeah, we were. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Oh, ha, ha I can be pressing. No, it's a dome painting. Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff, but worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster prom stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Oh, radioactive possum just bit you. What superpower do you get? The superpower of always choosing the right combination of emojis to get the desired reaction from all people, seducing my loved ones, burning my enemies, settling any argument, and even conveying complex emotional thought. The incredible power of writing fan fiction so compelling that the actual creators of the TV shows decide to go with my ideas and crazy ships. Uh, probably rabies? I'd go to the hospital immediately. Um, as far as I know, the American possum does not carry rabies. So, incorrect. Um, let's see, what does Blurn like? Blurn really knows how to handle an, em an emoji. So charming. You build a 100-foot statue commemorating an event so that in 1,000 years, archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? 
that mind-blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all that boring stuff they show on the news. Your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabid rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. That glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Um, let's, let's see, Blurn, I think Blurn would really be into mind-blowing twists. Hello, Fargo. It's nice to see you. All right, you find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? Ooh, I asked for Fargo not to press any buttons with your feet, please. Thank you. Um, come back down on the floor. Yeah, that's good. Okay, who do we want to woo? I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grant my own wishes. Him not to be so cliche. A genie and wishes? So mainstream. His friendship. Infinite confetti. Before asking for anything, you try to negotiate up to the three standard wishes. A rainbow that you can eat. Okay, you know what? I'm feeling, I'm feeling my oats today. I think, oh, yep, my cat pressed a button. Did anything go wrong? Nope, awesome. Okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like we can do this. So I'm gonna go, go see if we can get Vera. Hi, Vera. Now, I'm going to be trying to woo Vera while um, sort of rejecting her, her big plots. At least if it's a big plot I've run into. I've run into her, two of her major ones. I forget if she's got a third one, but I assume she does just because of the way the photographs are laid out. Okay. I haven't, I have not succeeded in wooing anyone as blue yet. I'm so blue about it. Okay. Oh, goodness gracious. My boldness is terrible. I got so shy. I'm very smart and charming, but gosh. Um, okay, but it's Vera, so I have to go to the library first. That day, you spent some time on the library's PCs, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain two money. Two money. Later, you see Miranda and Vera cornered by the wolf pack, who are watching them like a pack of wolves. Oh, hmm. Well, I hope... Okay. How would one of you ladies like to go on a date tonight with the hottest dogs ever to not be literal hot dogs? I feel like we just had this one the other day. Oh, the robot in the wall says I did. Yep, eh, sometimes it gets repetitive when you're trying to unlock all the scenes. But this time, at least I'm going for Vera. Ah, I wouldn't. Not at all. This is not at all how I like my courtships to begin. Where are the jewels? Where are the flowers? Where are the bloody heads of my enemies? Oh man, we'll show you courtship on the court when we win on the court at sports. We'll show you sportship courtship. Every time I think the guys at this school can't get any dumber. Oh, I get it. You're both shy. Don't worry, our barks are worse than our bites. Except when we're doing sports. Because then we bring it. Yeah. But uh, if neither of you have the confidence to say which one wants to go out with us tonight, you could we could just choose for you. Yikes. Like, they're, they're relatively well-intentioned, but you should definitely step in and save one of them. All right. Oh, tonight, Miranda can't. I have two tickets to Cirque de la Mer's underwater show. You don't want to go out with Vera. I hear her snakes have syphilis. So I just have to hope that this is not bold. Because everything else I'm good at. All right. 
I think it's smarts. Oh, crumbs. It was bold. Okay. Oh, no, Vera. I'm so sorry to hear of your illness. You'll look awful once all of your snakes fall out. My snakes aren't going to fall out. They don't have syphilis. How dare you start rumors about me? I should sue you for libel. My reputation is all I have. Other than money, good looks, and great clothes, of course. So, uh, if you don't have an STD, you want to go out tonight? Sure, I can absolutely go with you. I don't have syphilis, so I can go out with whoever I want, whenever I want. Sorry, my brain really wanted to change that to whomever mid-sentence, but that's not what it said. Dope. Well, how for you at eight? Damn it! That's why you should never joke about S. TDs. You lose two smarts and one boldness. Oh, we're not off to a great start, kids. We are not off to a great start. No, I believe I believe in myself. Ooh, okay, we gotta go eat with the prince because we gotta blast blast our boldness if we can. You're just trying to enjoy a meal in peace when space untwists itself to reveal the interdimensional prince. Most glorious hero, thank the squid star I found you. I have been confounded by the most fiendish riddle. A riddle that has vexed me for days, nay, weeks. The riddle of how to change the ringtone on my new smartphone. This interface is more torturous than my palace labyrinth. For real? You grab the prince's phone, change his ringtone to butts, 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 all about those butts by the booty bros. My hero, what seems difficult to me is trivial to you. And you even guess which ringtone I desired. A true all-time classic from the sixth dimension. There is only one way I can repay you. By bestowing upon you a superpower of your choice. I can do that. I'm the prince of another dimension. I can do all kinds of crazy things you don't know about. All kinds of crazy things besides use his phone, apparently. And he really only gives you two superpower options. Telepathy and ass that won't quit. Well, neither of those is boldness. So, um... Uh, let's go with telepathy. Because we gotta recover some of our smarts from that terrible... Terrible thing we did with the STDs. I'm sorry, Vera. I'm so sorry. The prince whacks you on the head with his telepathy rod, granting you access to the minds of others. Right in the middle of high school cafeteria at lunchtime. You are overwhelmed with images. A goblin's butt problems, a genie's foot fetish, two swamp creatures imagining each other naked. It's too much. You plead with the prince to downgrade your ability to telepathy, but only when you're drunk. Very well, your wish is my command. Perfect. Now you have an excuse to get drunk before every quiz. Until now, it was just regular alcoholism. You gain four smarts, despite the loss of brain cells. Doo doo. Do 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 do. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay, but before we can, I mean, before we go to the bathroom, we still have to get more money. We want Vera to like us. Oh no. Don't. Oh. So I clicked on the lib. Uh, it was supposed to be the library, but it's the shop. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, welcome. Welcome to my shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats. Shit that will lead you into stu stupid new adventures. Some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So, uh, take a look. A lemon. This is a lemon. Do I really need to explain every little thing I sell here? So I wonder... 
if this is for lemon party, if that's how you get the orgy. Now, I don't know if I've unlocked those. Oh, I was gonna stay with... Do I waste a turn or do I change what plot I'm going for? What week is this? This is just the first week. Yeah, let's do a special plot. You know, let's go crazy. Let's be wacky. Let's buy a corpse for $5. And remember, the first rule of Shop Club, no refunds. I didn't pay attention to what all it did to me, but now I have a corpse. Okay, so since I don't need to worry about Vera anymore, since we're just gonna go kind of run around with the corpse for a while, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's hit some bold. That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. While doing all that, you've been carrying your newly acquired corpse as if it was a totally normal thing to do. Hey, at least two people have come up to me with corpses in this game. So, it doesn't seem to be that unusual either. But, but some people seem to think otherwise. Who does? Damien, Vera, you were the two who brought the corpse to me. You don't get to judge me. Gosh. Oh no, it's the four most hateful people in the school. Why are you carrying a corpse, idiot? Psht! What a shameful display of distaste. Ha ha ha, what a noob! Carrying around corpses is for noobs. Oh, a corpse. I love corpses. Also, I'm super drunk. Okay, the three most hateful people in school and Polly. As the school social, oh, as the school sh social elite, we disapprove of this. I'm the head of the hierarchy, and I can't condone such stupidity under our domain. I am the taste of the hierarchy, and I don't appreciate such puerile use of a corpse. Also, lesser-known fact about corpses: they smell. I'm the fist of the hierarchy. And I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. Okay, so you're not necessarily opposed to me having a corpse. You just want punch. And Polly. Also, I'm like super drunk. So whatever Vera says. Yikes. Despite your disregard for stupid social con conventions and school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. Maybe because that's what this game is about? Could be. When you bought this corp, Corp corpse. Valerie totally told you it was a fashion accessory and that she was totally not just trying to dispose of a body. Now you're starting to feel she might have fooled you. Oh, so it's just a third person is getting me to get rid of their bodies. I should start charging for this. No time to lose. How can you convince them the corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? Trivia fact about fashion accessories. Most of them are worn on your head. Quick, put the corpse on your head. Shallow social creatures respond only to status. Rip the brand logo off the most high-end accessory you own and put it on the corpse. Oh, Grace. So, this seems like it might be creative. It doesn't seem so terribly bold. This seems maybe bold. It's got rip in the word. We're going to go. I'm just going to put it on my head. I mean, wear it like a hat, right? Oh, foo, so smart. I mean, it did say something about being logical or whatever. Swiftly, you gather the corpse and you place it on your head. Your classmates remain silent, looking at you. The tension is great. You do your best to look serious and fashionable. Hmm... I think what Blurn is trying to tell us is that this corpse is a hot fashion accessory. Yes, yes, indeed. Most fashion accessories are worn on your head. Hats, glasses, earrings, hats. I think it's cool how they're wearing a corpse on their head. And they're still, like, really cool about it. Fuck, I'm, like, big time drunk. Like, tomorrow my hangover will have a hit. 
Hey, wait, am I tripping or is Blurn wearing a corpse on their head? I mean, I did a bunch of super shrooms earlier, so I, I might be tripping. You're not tripping, Polly. Well, you are tripping, but also Blurn is in fact wearing a corpse on their head. And you know what? They are doing it in such a confident way, I hereby conclude that a corpse counts as a very hot fashion accessory. It would also be a pretty convenient way of disposing of the many corpses my ventures might or might not produce. I know, Vera. I've helped you with that before. You gotta... I agree. Confidence is what really counts when deciding if something makes for a good accessory. Even if that something is completely not hygienic nor healthy. Still drunk! And so all of them sign the decree that establishes a corpse as a, an acceptable fashion accessory, as high school social bureaucracy requires. Today is a bright day to have a corpse in your possession. You gain two charm and one smarts. Wahoo! But probably smelly. Hey, Coach. You're desperately trying to enjoy your meal in peace, but Coach insists on striking up a conversation. Hey there, bud. What you drinking? What? Milk? That's it? That's hardly a drink at all. Everybody knows the drink is the backbone of a balanced lunch. And what would be, what would be me without backbones? I don't know. My doctor yells at me whenever I try to find out. But enough about me. Let's get you juiced. You can have sports sauce or muscle juice. Which will it be? Uh, whiskey or both? Let's do both. Both? Both? What a bold choice. Especially considering that these two liquids combined create another highly explosive liquid. But you know what they say. You can't make an omelet without drinking a few explosives. Bottoms up. You grab the two bottles from Coach and squirt them into your mouth. Cowabunga! Luckily, your stomach is rated as a Class 5 atomic bomb shelter, so you avoid any negative consequences. Is it because I'm a Frankenstein? This is the first time I'm willing to accept that that's the case. M uh, maybe the shadow. shadow got yellow. He could have a special tummy. When your classmates see that you are literally willing to drink a bomb for no reason, though, they ceremonially... Uh, Ceremonially award you for boldness. Ceremonial. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We're pretty smart. We're pretty charming. Let's go have some fun. Uh, fool me once. Put me one shop. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain too fun. After your previous adventures, now corpses are an acceptable and quite hot fashion accessory. You've become a well-known trendsetter advocating for your beloved corpses. Life is now all fancy and busy. Luckily, you have your sexy, sexy, sexretary. I'm leaving it. To help you with all your new tasks. Mixplurn, we have a problem. If you had assumed your sexy, sexy, sex, sexy, mm, sexy, sexy, secretary had to be female, then shame on you. It's been leaked that Vogue's next issue will include an article titled 10 Reasons Why Wearing a Corpse as a Fashion Accessory is Not Chic and Probably Also a Crime. I've done some research and found the journalist. It's a bro called Fyodor Fedora. What should we do, boss? As Vogue rules dictate, the only way to subdue a Vogue journalist is by out-journalizing them in a journalism duel to the death. Sometimes people need a little push in the right direction. Kill his family and send them, him their severed heads as a warning. Well, I feel like that one's definitely bold. 
Uh, let's go with uh, the Duel to the Death. So creative. Ooh, cool. To the death. Yeah, because Duels to the Death never go out of fashion. Let me choose the best outfit for your duel, boss. And so you engage in a journalism duel with Fyodor Fedora. To out-journalist Fedora, you write an article titled 10 Reasons Why Wearing a Fedora is Not Cool and Definitely a Crime. It's a very eye-opening article that reflects on the social circumstances during the 20th century that destroyed the fedora's popularity as a symbol of masculine fashion. Vogue's board of executive editors fires Fedora, claiming now we clearly see it is not in Vogue's best interest to keep someone who wears fedoras. I mean, his name is Fedora. He might, uh, he might, he might not wear fedoras. We don't know. They didn't illustrate him. Also, the fact that he just lost a duel to the death makes us believe he is not a safe bet in the long term for this company. And oh, they're right. Your article is so good that you win a Pulitzer which you totally used to bash Fedora's head into a pulp. Hooray for murder, boss. Yes to murder, but for all the right reasons. Also, Vogue publishes your article and Fedora's become so uncool that it actually fuels the sale of corpses as a fashionable alternative to them. I feel like I read that wrong the second time and just said corpses again instead of Fedora's. I don't know, I can't rewind it. Y'all can let me know. Vogue pays you free money, but they assure you that the real payment has been an experience. Sure. All right, where do we want to go? Uh, let's boost our creativity. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves has descended to give you a figurative blowjob. I'm just going to say my own words. Look, your performance is intense and inspiring. That's all that matters. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. Uh, you notice Vera standing in the corner, pissed. What looks like a fresh braid on the back of her head is actually... <gasps> Two of her snakes fighting. Poison's flying everywhere. Oh, I'm okay. It's just Hissy and Bob having another disagreement. It happens. This time they can't decide whether Miranda's domain should be called a kingdom or an empire. It's like, who cares? I'm telling you, if they weren't my hair, I would sell them to Thailand, where they eat snakes. Decapitate them to set an example. You could totally rock some bangs. Snakes get feisty when they don't have jobs. Put them to work building your evil empire. Yeah, give snakes jobs. Don't cut off their heads. So smart. Why, of course. I'd forgotten how testy snakes become without gainful employment. It's all in the best-selling book, Snakes in Suits. But come to think of it, my snakes already do have jobs. They're just not doing them. Bob, where is the report on Portugal? Are they at war yet? Hissy, have you poisoned the school's water supply like I asked? No? Then how am I supposed to sell water to Miranda's family? You think it's easy selling water to mermaids? Hissy and Bob pull out cell phones and start making calls. You don't know which impresses you more, Vera's manager managerial skills or the fact that her snakes can use cell phones without thumbs. Either way, you gain two creativity and one smarts. 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 Bing dong, bing bong. Oh, hey, Prince, what are you up to? I'm going to have some pizza with you. You're just about to take a bite out of your sand. Well, no, I'm eating pizza. It has pizza on the table. You're about to take a bite of your sandwich when some douchebag rips a hole in the fabric of reality. It is I, the interdimensional prince. I have searched far and wide for a hero capable of solving a most fiendish riddle for me. The riddle of how to get my TV to switch from HDMI 1 to HDMI 2. I've tried everything short of actually using the remote control. You leave a deep sigh and accompany the prince to his dimension, where you solve his problem by using the remote control. 
You are truly both wise and generous. I say thank you. Please allow me to teach you one of my kingdom's customary rituals. Ritual. Perhaps a laser communion might interest you. Or uh, reverse baptism. Or eggs. The choice is yours. Omelette du fromage. Fuck that. Let's make up our own ritual. How about the ritual where you give me a pile of money and go away? All right, let's think. Um, I don't remember if the corpse stuff takes money. So I'm just going to pump up my other stuff. Pump up something else. Let's make up our own ritual. Ooh, yeah. Ah, we have a ritual for this. The ritual of making up rituals. It's why we have so many dumb and bad rituals. First, we get incredibly high on interdimensional weed. Then we practice... No, no, then we pretty much do whatever we want, and then we make it illegal for people not to do that thing once a year. Sounds good to you. You guys get ripped and invent a holiday called Shrimp Christmas. It's Christmas, but everybody just gets stockings full of shrimp delivered by a giant shrimp. Ugh. Ugh. It becomes so popular that it leaks over into your dimension, where it replaces actual Christmas. You gain four creativity. Blech. Shrimp. Too much shrimp. Even if I liked shrimp, I don't think a stocking full of shrimp would be cool. All right, what do we want to do? Uh, you know, let's let's be bold. That's where you know that's where we started. Is not being bold enough. Let's really bloom and put on our tight pants and smoke cigarettes like Sandy and Grease. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. While in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny big-eyed turtle with your bare hands. That monstrous act would instantly give you 500 boldness. But come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep two boldness anyway, just for saying that to yourself out loud. Honestly, I would never. Ah, uh, life is good. You're a successful trendsetter that has moved monster kind forward to a more corpse-friendly society. Or it would be good if you weren't about to crash into the three biggest enemies of progress and inclusiveness. Hey! Are you carrying a corpse? What kind of loser? What kind of lame loser? Corpses are dumb! Just saying all sorts of stuff. We're taking your corpse so we can make fun of it! The bigots! Okay, well, uh... Hey, a corpse! Give it to me! I want its loot! Also, you're a monster, right? Prepare to die! The haters! It is me, the interdimensional prince. I'm here in your dimension to marry some cute high schoolers. Oh, what's that you're carrying with you? Is it some kind of dry, skinny, funky-smelling high schooler? Can I marry it? And, um, the interdimensional prince? Let's settle with the creeps. Or whatever, this dude isn't good news for sure. This can't be good. You're surrounded by jerks. It's time to fight for your corpse and for a more inclusive and corpse-friendly society. N uh, mm, but how? No, you're woke enough to acknowledge your corpse doesn't need a knight in shining armor to protect it. It can protect itself. Love is always the answer! Wink! Oh, gosh. Well, neither one of these is fun. I think this is charm. I can't tell if this is smart to creativity. But I also really like this answer. Let, let my corpse speak for itself. Or the corpse that I have. Not my corpse. You leave your corpse alone. It can defend itself. It actually can't. It's a corpse. But you've become so woke that you've achieved level 12 of awakeness. At that level, your awakeness is just so strong it affects those around you. Whoa, bros! I think... I think maybe bullying a corpse, or uh, anyone for that matter, is uh, not cool? And I feel like looting corpses might be bad too. It's a very weird feeling. Maybe it was the cockatrice burritos I ate before. Yes. Oui, oui. I know what you're feeling. I suddenly see how marrying a corpse is not okay. 
But what about fooling high schoolers into marriage? Can we settle for that? Well, I guess you can't work miracles. I mean, he's the reason that they're all over 18. His whole existence is why none of them are actual children. Get to share all these newfound realizations on the internet. To feel self-righteous and be judgmental and patronizing to other people. The awakeness effect will fade soon, but you've made the world a better place for a few minutes at least. So feel free to feel self-righteous and even to be a bit judgmental and patronizing to other people. There's not a lot of yucks that I'm going to yum, but that's one of them. Ironically, you ended up saving your corpse, but what's that you see in its beautiful dead eyes? Is it gratitude? You're starting to form a really nice bond with your corpse. You feel like you have a very special connection. Is this what some might call love? Or is it just you hallucinating due to the continuous inhalation of the many unhealthy fumes the corpse is releasing as it slowly decomposes? Hard to tell. Only sure thing is that you gain two charm and one smarts. All right, so with this special one, we've got a special, special ending. Am I going to choose one of these six? No, I'm going to not choose any of them. And what's going to happen? And none of them? That's right, none of them. You ask nobody to prom because none of them are as cool as a corpse. Oh yeah, that's right. You ask your corpse to prom and for sure it doesn't say no. Uh-oh, yes, he consent. Mm -mm. So a date it is. You bring your corpse to prom. What a whimsical evening. Oh, look at him. He's all dapper. And nobody judges you. Mostly because everybody is doing their own fucked up stuff. So you get to date a corpse. Still, that doesn't make it less wrong. For today, you romance a corpse. Maybe tomorrow you romance a sentient being who can really love you back. Baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. I'm the best at being alone. Look at me. Ah, uh, see, it's a new secret ending and we got a bunch of new events. So, even though I, I messed up and accidentally clicked on the shop, we still got a pretty good, uh, pretty good run through with this one. All right, well, Thank you, everybody, for joining me once again for our adventure. And I hope that you stay safe out there, all right? Goodbye.